Chapter 67 Ancient and Modern Sorcery The scripture account of Saul's visit to the woman of Endor has been a source of perplexity to many students of the Bible. There are some who take the position that Samuel was actually present at the interview with Saul. But the Bible itself furnishes sufficient ground for a contrary conclusion. If, as claimed by some, Samuel was in heaven, he must have been summoned thence, either by the power of God or by that of Satan. None can believe for a moment that Satan had power to call the holy prophet of God from heaven to honor the incantations of an abandoned woman. Nor can we conclude that God summoned him to the witch's cave. For the Lord had already refused to communicate with Saul by dreams, by Urim, or by prophets. 1 Samuel chapter 28, verse 6. These were God's own appointed mediums of communication, and he did not pass them by to deliver the message through the agent of Satan. The message itself is sufficient evidence of its origin. Its object was not to lead Saul to repentance, but to urge him on to ruin. And this is not the work of God, but of Satan. Furthermore, the act of Saul in consulting a sorceress is cited in Scripture as one reason why he was rejected by God and abandoned to destruction. Saul died for his transgression which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it, and inquired not of the Lord. Therefore he slew him and turned the kingdom unto David the son of Jesse. 1 Chronicles chapter 10, verses 13 and 14. Here it is distinctly stated that Saul inquired of the familiar spirit, not of the Lord. He did not communicate with Samuel, the prophet of God, but through the sorceress he held intercourse with Satan. Satan could not present the real Samuel, but he did present a counterfeit that served his purpose of deception. Nearly all forms of ancient sorcery and witchcraft were founded upon a belief in communion with the dead. Those who practiced the arts of necromancy claimed to have intercourse with departed spirits and to obtain through them a knowledge of future events. This custom of consulting the dead is referred to in the prophecy of Isaiah. When they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19. This same belief in communion with the dead formed the cornerstone of heathen idolatry. The gods of the heathen were believed to be the deified spirits of departed heroes. Thus the religion of the heathen was a worship of the dead. This is evident from the scriptures. In the account of the sin of Israel at Beth Peor, it is stated, Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods, and the people did eat, and bowed down to their gods, and Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor. Numbers chapter 25, verses 1 to 3. The psalmist tells us to what kind of gods these sacrifices were offered. Speaking of the same apostasy of the Israelites, he says, They joined themselves also unto Baal Peor, and ate the sacrifices of the dead. Psalm 106, verse 28. That is, sacrifices that had been offered to the dead. The deification of the dead has held a prominent place in nearly every system of heathenism, as has also the supposed communion with the dead. The gods were believed to communicate their will to men, and also, when consulted, to give them counsel. Of this character were the famous oracles of Greece and Rome. The belief in communion with the dead is still held, even in professedly Christian lands. Under the name of spiritualism, the practice of communicating with beings claiming to be the spirits of the departed has become widespread. It is calculated to take hold of the sympathies of those who have laid their loved ones in the grave. Spiritual beings sometimes appear to persons in the form of their deceased friends and relate incidents connected with their lives and perform acts which they performed while living. In this way, they lead men to believe that their dead friends are angels, hovering over them and communicating with them. Those who thus assume to be the spirits of the departed are regarded with a certain idolatry 
and with many their word has greater weight than the word of God. There are many, however, who regard spiritualism as a mere imposture. The manifestations by which it supports its claims to a supernatural character are attributed to fraud on the part of the medium. But while it is true that the results of trickery have often been palmed off as genuine manifestations, there have also been marked evidences of supernatural power. And many who reject spiritualism as a result of human skill or cunning will, when confronted with manifestations which they cannot account for upon this ground, be led to acknowledge its claims. Modern spiritualism and the forms of ancient witchcraft and idol worship, all having communion with the dead as their vital principle, are founded upon that first lie by which Satan beguiled Eve in Eden. Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof ye shall be as gods. Genesis chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. Alike based upon falsehood and perpetuating the same, they are alike from the father of lies. The Hebrews were expressly forbidden to engage in any manner in pretended communion with the dead. God closed this door effectually when he said, The dead know not anything, neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 5 and 6. His breath goeth forth, he returneth to his earth, in that very day his thoughts perish. Psalm 146, verse 4. And the Lord declared to Israel, The soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits, and after wizards, to go a-whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul, and will cut him off from among his people. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 6. The familiar spirits were not the spirits of the dead, but evil angels the messengers of Satan. Ancient idolatry, which, as we have seen, comprises both worship of the dead and pretended communion with them, is declared by the Bible to have been demon worship. The Apostle Paul, in warning his brethren against participating in any manner in the idolatry of their heathen neighbors, says, The things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 20. The psalmist, speaking of Israel, says that they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. And in the next verse he explains that they sacrificed them unto the idols of Canaan. Psalm 106, verses 37 and 38. In their supposed worship of dead men, they were, in reality, worshiping demons. Modern spiritualism, resting upon the same foundation, is but a revival in a new form of the witchcraft and demon worship that God condemned and prohibited of old. It is foretold in the Scriptures, which declare that, in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Paul, in his second letter to the Thessalonians, points to the special working of Satan in spiritualism as an event to take place immediately before the second advent of Christ. Speaking of Christ's second coming, he declares that it is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. And Peter, describing the dangers to which the church was to be exposed in the last days, says that as there were false prophets who led Israel into sin, so there will be false teachers who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and many shall follow their pernicious ways. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Here the apostle has pointed out one of the marked characteristics of spiritualist teachers. They refuse to acknowledge Christ as the Son of God. Concerning such teachers, the beloved John declares, Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. 1 John chapter 2, verses 22 and 23. 
Spiritualism, by denying Christ, denies both the Father and the Son, and the Bible pronounces it the manifestation of Antichrist. By the prediction of Saul's doom given through the woman of Endor, Satan planned to ensnare the people of Israel. He hoped that they would be inspired with confidence in the sorceress and would be led to consult her. Thus they would turn from God as their counselor and would place themselves under the guidance of Satan. The lure by which spiritualism attracts the multitudes is its pretended power to draw aside the veil from the future and reveal to men what God has hidden. God has in His Word opened before us the great events of the future, all that it is essential for us to know, and He has given us a safe guide for our feet amid all its perils. But it is Satan's purpose to destroy men's confidence in God, to make them dissatisfied with their condition in life, and to lead them to seek a knowledge of what God has wisely veiled from them, and to despise what He has revealed in His holy word. There are many who become restless when they cannot know the definite outcome of affairs. They cannot endure uncertainty, and in their impatience they refuse to wait to see the salvation of God. Apprehended evils drive them nearly distracted. They give way to their rebellious feelings and run hither and thither in passionate grief, seeking intelligence concerning that which has not been revealed. If they would but trust in God and watch under prayer, they would find divine consolation. Their spirit would be calmed by communion with God. The weary and the heavy laden would find rest under their souls if they would only go to Jesus. But when they neglect the means that God has ordained for their comfort, and resort to other sources, hoping to learn what God has withheld, they commit the error of Saul, and thereby gain only a knowledge of evil. God is not pleased with this course, and has expressed it in the most explicit terms. This impatient haste to tear away the veil from the future reveals a lack of faith in God, and leaves the soul open to the suggestions of the master deceiver. Satan leads men to consult those that have familiar spirits, and by revealing hidden things of the past, he inspires confidence in his power to foretell things to come. By experience gained through the long ages, he can reason from cause to effect and often forecast, with a degree of accuracy, some of the future events of man's life. Thus he is enabled to deceive poor, misguided souls and bring them under his power and lead them captive at his will. God has given us the warning by his prophet, When they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God, for the living to the dead? To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Isaiah chapter 8, verses 19 and 20. Shall those who have a holy God infinite in wisdom and power, go unto wizards, whose knowledge comes from intimacy with the enemy of our Lord? God himself is the light of his people. He bids them fix their eyes by faith upon the glories that are veiled from human sight. The sun of righteousness sends its bright beams into their hearts. They have light from the throne of heaven, and they have no desire to turn away from the source of light to the messengers of Satan. The demon's message to Saul, although it was a denunciation of sin and a prophecy of retribution, was not meant to reform him, but to goad him to despair and ruin. Oftener, however, it serves the tempter's purpose best to lure men to destruction by flattery. The teaching of the demon gods in ancient times fostered the vilest license. The divine precepts condemning sin and enforcing righteousness were set aside. Truth was lightly regarded and impurity was not only permitted, but enjoined. Spiritualism declares that there is no death, no sin, no judgment, no retribution, that men are unfallen demigods, that desire is the highest law, and that man is accountable only to himself. The barriers that God has erected to guard truth, purity, and reverence are broken down, and many are thus emboldened in sin. Does not such teaching suggest an origin similar to that of demon worship? The Lord presented before Israel the results of holding communion with evil spirits in the abominations of the Canaanites. They were without natural affection, 
idolaters, adulterers, murderers, and abominable by every corrupt thought and revolting practice. Men do not know their own hearts, for the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. But God understands the tendencies of the depraved nature of man. Then, as now, Satan was watching to bring about conditions favorable to rebellion, that the people of Israel might make themselves as abhorrent to God as were the Canaanites. The adversary of souls is ever on the alert to open channels for the unrestrained flow of evil in us, for he desires that we may be ruined and be condemned before God. Satan was determined to keep his hold on the land of Canaan, and when it was made the habitation of the children of Israel, and the law of God was made the law of the land, he hated Israel with a cruel and malignant hatred and plotted their destruction. Through the agency of evil spirits, strange gods were introduced, and because of transgression, the chosen people were finally scattered from the land of promise. This history Satan is striving to repeat in our day. God is leading his people out from the abominations of the world, that they may keep his law, and because of this, the rage of the accuser of our brethren knows no bounds. The devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Revelation chapter 12, verses 10 and 12. The anti-typical land of promise is just before us, and Satan is determined to destroy the people of God and cut them off from their inheritance. The admonition, Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation, Mark chapter 14, verse 38, was never more needed than now. The word of the Lord to ancient Israel is addressed also to his people in this age. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 31, and Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 12. 